Today we have this fascinating gamma integral where it's the integral from 0 to 1 half of gamma 1 minus x times gamma 1 plus x dx. And the solution development is pretty satisfying and the result is kind of surprising. It has a couple of nice surprises in it. So without further delay, we're going to call our integral i, so we have something to refer to. And we notice that we have gamma 1 plus x, and now I'm making use of the recursion formula for the gamma function, which states that gamma 1 plus z equals z times gamma z. This implies that i is in fact equal to the integral from 0 to 1 half of gamma 1 minus x times x times gamma x dx. And notice that we have another structure here of gamma x times gamma 1 minus x. So we can invoke Euler's wonderful reflection formula of gamma x times gamma 1 minus x being equal to pi divided by the sine of pi x. So this implies that i is in fact equal to the integral from 0 to 1 half of pi times x dx divided by sine pi x. And let's make a substitution here, or let's just call it a transformation from the x to the uh, pi times x world. Or, wait a second, it should be the opposite of it. It should be pi x to the x world. So this means that your integral transforms into the integral from, now if you have one half, then instead you'll have pi by two, uh, half of pi, that is in the pi x world. And upstairs you have this x term. The differential element is gonna be divided by a factor of pi there, sorry about that. So yeah, you have dx and this constant multiple of 1 by pi outside divided by sine x. Okay, cool. So this is the integral structure that we're going to evaluate. And now for something really cool. We're going to invoke the definition of the sine function from complex analysis, which states that sine x equals e to the ix minus e to the negative ix divided by 2i. So this implies that i can be written as 2i divided by pi times the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of x dx divided by e to the ix minus e to the negative ix. And now we're going to expand using this e to the negative ix term. So multiplying upstairs and downstairs, we get... Uh, 2i divided by pi times the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of x times e to the negative ix times 1 by 1 minus e to the negative 2ix dx. And now we're about to invoke something pretty cool again. It's the geometric series expansion of this term here, which we can write as the sum over the non-negative integers k of e to the negative 2i kx. So all of this implies that we can write i as 2i divided by pi times the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of x times e to the negative ix times the sum over k of e to the negative 2i kx dx. And because these two terms here are independent of the index variable, we can slip them inside the summation operator. So we have 2i divided by pi times the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of the sum over k of x times, now multiplying these two exponential functions and factoring out this uh, negative ix term, we have e to the negative ix times 2k plus 1, and we're integrating with respect to x, of course. And now for the golden question, can we in fact switch up the integration and the summation operators? Well, that depends upon convergence. And we have x, which is bounded on this interval from 0 to pi by 2, and we have the complex exponential function, which is bounded as well. So yes indeed we can perform the switch up and we have 2i divided by pi times the sum over the non-negative integers k of the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of x times e to the negative ix times 2k plus 1 integration with respect to x. I have this pretty fascinating structure but 
Recall exactly what we were evaluating. The integral i was defined as 1 by pi times the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of x divided by sine x dx. And this here is a real number. So we can make use of the real part operator to simplify our results and actually get some clarity over what the integral evaluates to. So making use of the real part operator, we see that because the left hand side is a real number, we only need the real part of the structure that involves complex numbers. And what exactly would that be? Well, Euler's wonderful formula states that e to the negative i x, where x is a real number, equals the cosine of negative x, which of course is cosine x because, well, cosine is an even function, plus i times the sine of negative x, and sine being an odd function means that we can pop out a negative sign here, and if we multiply by this factor of i, then we get i times cosine x and i squared here. And i squared is, of course, negative 1, so you have a positive sine x. So that means the real part of i times e to the negative i x is, in fact, the sine of x. So all of this implies that i equals 2 divided by pi times the sum over k of the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of x times e to the, oh sorry about that, we needed uh, the sine thing only, so we have the sine of 2k plus 1x dx. Now all we need is some integration by parts for this structure. So using the di method, the favorite of black pen, red pen of course, we're going to differentiate x and integrate sine of 2k plus 1x. And on differentiation you have a 1 here and on integration you have a negative cosine 2k plus 1x divided by 2k plus 1. Okay, cool. So this means that i equals 2 by pi times the sum over k of um, x times uh, negative x times the cosine of 2k plus 1 x divided by 2k plus 1 and the limits of integration are 0 and pi by 2 and of course in the limit as x approaches pi by 2, the cosines are going to evaluate to 0. And in the limit as x approaches 0, x is going to approach z is going to approach 0. So that means all of this collapses to a big fat 0. And you're left with two negatives, right? So two negatives give you a positive. And you have the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of cosine 2k plus 1x divided by 2k plus 1 dx, which is of course extremely simple to evaluate. We have 2 by pi times the sum over k, and this is just a constant term here, 2k plus 1 with respect to integration that is, and we're left with the integral from 0 to pi by 2 of this cosine structure, which of course evaluates to sine 2k plus 1 x divided by 2k plus 1 so we can square this term and the limits are 0 and pi by 2 and as x approaches 0 the signs are going to evaluate to 0 however as x approaches pi by 2 we're going to get negative 1 to the k so all of this implies that i equals 2 by pi times the sum over the non-negative integers k of negative 1 to the k divided by 2k plus 1 squared, which we Im immediately recognize as the original top g, that is Catalan's constant. So the integral i evaluates to 2 times Catalan's constant divided by pi. So yeah, that is quite a nice result indeed. And I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe. Thank you. See you next time.